Styling athletes is different from dressing, let's say, a celebrity, because these guys are not sample size. Basketball, for instance, it's always been about the shoes. If you look at Michael Jordan, you look at Allen Iverson, everyone who's kind of come up, it's always been about that signature shoe. So often the shoe will be that final punctuation piece, and it's also something that the press notes pay attention to. I think the players are all wearing crazy outfits and trying to one-up each other because the NBA is such a trend-driven league and because they're so competitive. My days are completely chaotic. I'm always traveling. I want to make sure I'm really enjoying life and not focusing on just work. My fuel points really mean I've made my day worthwhile. I know that I'm focusing on the whole picture. I'm generating fuel just by being myself. I'm gonna go to the Dallas Stars. I don't know if anyone remembers, but they have these jerseys that had a bull's head. It looks like a female reproductive system. It has, I don't, when I'm watching a check and I'm watching Brendan Morrow check someone, I don't wanna feel it in my ovaries. All right, I have to go Dennis Rodman, because I think he's gonna do a huge movie deal in Korea. Phil Jackson, because I want to get peyote gifts and stuff like that. Wow. And then Idris Elba, but only in a Stringer Bell accent. It's cheaper to keep her. He should just cut his losses and go. And if money is so important, he should not be buying Bill Kelly's house in Buffalo that has 13 rooms. I'm hoping that you're starting to get the picture, that there's more to women's sneaker culture than just the old shrink it and pink it model, and the overall lack of dope product being accessible to women, despite what the market is demanding. In 2017, high heel sales fell by 11%, while sneaker sales grew by 37%. The numbers don't lie. But women's product is still not at the same consistent release quality or quantity of most male branded products. One of the main issues is perception. The assumption is always, women wear sneakers for men and male attention. But newsflash, it's not about approval. We wear sneakers because we like sneakers. I think it's almost like when Damar was younger, it was kind of cocky versus confidence. Yes. And I think Terrence Ross has cockiness in spades and now it's, he has to just keep being confident. And I think that's really gonna be the ticket for him. So this kind of ties in a reflecting element, a diamond element, um, our use of color. As a brand designer, my job really comes down to storytelling. I need this black leather jacket right here. Yeah. I have a background working as a stylist. I know how to kind of build an image, build a story. So I think that's really where my strength comes. Hey, how's it going? How are you doing? Guys, thanks for coming through. Okay. Got some stuff ready for Happy you. Happy Valentine's Day. Oh, thank you. I'll take all the love. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. So we actually have a ton of stuff that will actually fit your 6'5 frame. Wow, really? Yeah, oh, so we got a few pieces set up. Oh, this might be a little tight. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, you like it? What do you guys yeah, think? I like that. I like this part right there. Yeah, I think the color is thick. Yes, you got a little mesh detail. When it comes to Kobe Bryant's style evolution, we have to start at the beginning, when he wore number eight, or as I like to call it, his I don't give a f stage. He's a great spokesperson for Nike and his brand, as he wears it head to toe. The first stage of Carmelo Anthony's style evolution is the Allen Iverson phase. This is when Melo was wearing cornrows, big chains with giant pendants, super baggy shorts and jeans, and tall tees all the time. Because at that point in time, everybody wanted to be Allen Iverson.